Today we're cutting apart the Air Max 97. These are the shoes that really put Nike's Air Max technology on the map and were involved more recently in some controversy with Lil Nas X and Mischief with their Satan version of this shoe that had drops of blood in the air unit. So we're gonna cut these apart, test the air unit, and do a few other tests to really see what these shoes are all about. And thanks to Kamakoto for sponsoring this video. Kamakoto makes great Japanese steel kitchen knives using traditional techniques from Japan. Kamakoto builds on a legacy of over 800 years of Japanese technology and expertise in creating the steel to make knives that have been meticulously handcrafted from using traditional techniques that date back all the way from the Edo period in Japan. And one cool thing is Kamakoto only uses steel source from mills in Japan and each Kamakoto knife goes through a rigorous 19 step process that takes several years from start to finish. And each knife comes in one of these really nice heavy duty ash wood boxes that help you protect the knives and protect you from the knives. And it also makes it a really good gift because of how nice the presentation is. Each knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. And Kamakoto knives are used by Michelin star chefs all over the world. And one interesting thing is all their knives have a single bevel edge. So you can see on this side, there's no bevel and this one, it's the full bevel. And that's how they get such a sharp edge because they really are crazy sharp. And we'll see how sharp they are because we're gonna use probably this knife to cut these, these shoes in half. So if you're looking for a new knife set, Kamakoto has several special offers going on right now and is offering the viewers of this channel an extra $50 off any purchase with the discount code ROSEANVILLE. So click the link in my description or just go to kamakoto.com slash ROSEANVILLE and don't forget to use the code ROSEANVILLE to get that 50 bucks off. Thanks again to Kamakoto. So now let's go over the shoe information. So the brand is Nike, the style is the Air Max 97. The colorway I have is the gold medal version. They weigh one pound even. They retailed for $180. They're made in Vietnam and the original release of these shoes was 1997 with the silver bullet colorway, but this version, the gold medal version, came out in 2020 for the canceled 2020 Olympics. So now let's go over the information that we can gather about this shoe before we cut it in half, starting with the design and a little bit of the history of the shoe. So the most popularized and marketed version of the story is that the original silver colorway and the, and the form of the shoe was inspired by a Japanese silver bullet trains, hence the nickname of these shoes, the silver bullets at launch. But what's interesting is the designer, Christian Tresser, is on record saying that the colors and the materials and the finishing of this design was inspired by a mountain bike. So a little less sexy than the Japanese bullet train and then if we move to the upper of the shoe so the upper is made of what looks like a fake patent leather the patent leather is a really shiny high finish leather that is easily faked with fake leather because of how finished it is and just like the silver version this also has that 3m reflective tape that goes around the upper two lines of this shoe allegedly for durability and visibility and it is a kind of an interesting material because you, you almost can't tell it's reflective until you're in the right light and since we're talking about the upper another story of the inspiration that Tresser had for the upper of the shoe is that the overall form and silhouette was inspired by water droplets in a pond rippling out and you can and you can definitely tell by the concentric rings that emanate from the center of the shoe especially from the top down and it also has this little water droplet on the sole whether it was coincidence or not and from the outside you might assume that this is like four or five built up layers of either fake leather or real leather so I want to cut these apart and kind of peel it like an onion to really see if it's multiple layers or if it's just if the next layer starts where the previous layer stops so let's let's do a little dissection on these And now that we've got it dissected, we can clearly see that this is a fake leather, which is unfortunate, but it's, it is it is a sneaker, so it's not that big of a deal. It just would have been cool to see this high polished patent leather out of real leather. Um, and we can see that those multiple layers are not layered up like it looks. They, they're just individual layers that start and stop where the previous layer begins like we suspected. 
So, but, it, but that's that's better anyway, because you don't want half an inch of fake leather wrapping around your foot to give you that rippling water effect. And then if we move to the midsole, probably the most identifiable part of the shoe, this was the first Air Max ever to feature a single molded air unit that extended from the heel all the way to the toe seamlessly because previous Air Maxes still had a visible air unit at the forefoot, but they were separated and not continuous like this one is. And I think that's part of why this shoe really popped when it first came out and why Little Nas X and Mischief chose this shoe to infuse with first some holy water in the God version of the Air Max 97 and then later the Satan version that we talked about at the intro because it just is a, a perfect platform to, to put things that shouldn't belong in shoes inside of shoes. And this air unit looks like it's just one continuous single piece, but in all reality, there's two separate chambers in this air unit the, with the big bubbles on each side with those supporting columns on the inside. And then you have this little bubble on the back here that's for the heel. And what's really interesting about these two different chambers is they're pressurized at two different pressures. So this bigger chamber, is at allegedly at 25 PSI and this smaller chamber at the heel is at allegedly five PSI. And I, I'm assuming that's because you want a little bit more softness for those heel strikes when you're walking or running because these were originally designed as a running shoe. So, so to me, that's super interesting because it's not just this gimmicky thing. They have put some thought into it. So to test that, I've, I've jerry-rigged a little tire pressure gauge with a sharpened like basketball needle on the end to test how many PSI these chambers actually have because 25 seems like a lot of pressure for a shoe. I'm really curious if we can get a decent reading on these. And to test that pressure gauge, we tried it on a pair of Air Jordans and it did get a pretty decent reading of about 10. So I think it, well, it should get us in the right ballpark of if these are actually at 25 PSI. So as you saw, it wasn't quite 25 PSI, but there definitely is a, a pressure differential between these two. And it, it might it might be 25 PSI and this testing device that we have might just not be the best. But I do like the fact that they are two different pressures, at least, you know, even if it's not 25 and five, it is a pressure difference. And that's kind of where that technology aspect of the shoe is interesting to me. So I was happy to see that they are at least two different pressures. Then if we move to the outsole, so this is a rubber outsole. And it used to have the PSI of each chamber of the air unit on the outsole, but they don't do that anymore, unfortunately. And some people think that this little bubble here, that little like droplet bubble is part of the air unit, but I don't think it is. So we'll see when we get it cut in half. We'll, I'll try to cut right down the middle of that and see how that's um, structured on the inside. And, but it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to put part of your air unit touching the ground. Cause if you ever stepped on anything sharp, you would just diffuse your entire shoe. So that brings us to everyone's favorite part. Let's cut these in half and see what's on the inside, how it's all structured and how they achieve the Air Max 97. All right, I got it chopped in half. A little bit sketchy with the Kamakoto knife, but we did it. So let's see what's inside. So as you can see, that little bubble on the bottom that people sometimes think is part of the air unit is not. It's just foam underneath of it that separates it from the air unit. And as for the midsole itself, there's way more foam in here than I expected. I, for, for whatever reason, I just assumed that the air unit took up the majority of the midsole, but I would say the majority of this is foam. And I, I also cut it lengthwise so you can see what the air unit cross-section looks like. And I, this, this cut is really interesting. I, 
I, uh, I'm glad I cut it this way because you don't really get the full effect of how the air unit's structured and how it's placed in the shoe unless you cut it this way. And so these air units that you see on the outside, I think they're mostly for show because where your foot actually sits in the shoe is over top of these columns and over top of the tunnels of the air unit. So the big bubbles on the outside is probably mostly for show or maybe it's to have a little an expansive chamber for when you compress those columns and the air in those tubes that that overflows into these bubbles and gives you a little bit more of a squish. But it makes a lot of sense to have the columns and these little tunnels of air underneath your foot because if this was just a giant airbag, it'd be a little precarious. You might be rolling your ankle and, and slipping around. It'd be like, it'd be literally be like walking on top of an air mattress and how unstable it is. <laughs> so it makes sense they do it this way. It just, for some reason, I just thought there's a lot more air in the air unit. And another thing I was surprised by was how thin the actual membrane of the air unit is. It's only a millimeter thick and it is a pretty tough material, but for, for some reason I thought it'd be like at least two millimeters thick, especially exposed to the outside world that close to the ground. So super interesting. I love seeing the cross section of this. And that's why I love cutting sneakers in half as well as boots because there's so much more tech and it's really fun to put these shoes to the test to see if they're really actually tech or if it's just gimmicky. So do I think that Air Max 97s are a gimmick or are they actually tech? I would say that they're, they're a gimmick that works. You know, it's somewhere in between. They're clearly a little bit gimmicky, but I think that's the point. And I think that without the, sh the sides showing off the air unit, you wouldn't appreciate it. So. To me, it's it's a design that followed form and function. And it's almost like the the form is to show off the function of the air unit. And I, I really like that. So let me know what you think and let me know your experiences with the Air Max 97s. And let me know which sneakers you want me to cut apart next and which sneakerhead mysteries or long held truths are worth questioning. And thank you guys so much for your support. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing and liking this video. It's the easiest way to support the channel. It's the freest way to support this channel. And it's the only number that sponsors look at. So I'd appreciate it if you just do those two little clicks. And thank you so much for watching and huge thanks to Colin, the research assistant for this video. And let me know what you think of the green screen. Keep it or drop it. Let me know. Uh, thank you guys. See ya.